Hey everyone, it's Scott from CertMedia.com. Today we go over the Auto Optimize plugin. Auto Optimize is a free optimization plugin found in the WordPress.org repository with paid add-ons known as Auto Optimize Power Ups. We're only going to be discussing what's baked into the plugin for free. We will not be discussing the Power Ups in this video. We might be able to do so in a later video. We'll just briefly touch on them and where they exist, but we won't be going into their functionalities. To go to the Settings menu, you'll click Settings Auto Optimize, and you'll be taken to the Admin panel. You'll also be given a toolbar in your admin bar. What this does is it tells you the active cache signs and allows you to delete the cache. If you enable the optimized JavaScript button underneath the JavaScript options, what this will do is it will enable the minification of all JavaScript assets. When you minify the assets, they will not be combined by default. You have to select the aggregate JS files for them to also be aggregated. I typically recommend that they are aggregated because Auto Optimize will also add it with a defer attribute and move that JS into the footer. By default though, it does exclude jQuery.js. The reason for that is jQuery.js is known to cause problems when combined. On most WordPress websites, jQuery.js is a dependent of most inline JavaScript. So if you were to combine it, you will have JS errors in your website and it will be quite apparent to the users who visit. So I recommend aggregating the JS files. You have a follow-up option to aggregate inline JS. On most websites, this is not recommended to be used. The reason for this is that this option can cause the cache size to grow quite largely, quite quickly, as it mentions. What will happen is if you have any sort of inline and dynamic JS, so say it includes the a nonce or something that changes on every page load, or it includes the ID of the po of the page. What will end up happening is Auto Optimize will aggregate that JS and the cache will effectively just keep reproducing itself on either every page load or on every page. So you'll end up with several thousand files on a very large website, which could get you in trouble with your host and ultimately cause major performance issues. I don't recommend enabling this option with Auto Optimize. You can also force the JavaScript in the head. I don't recommend using this option either. The reason that this, you don't want to use this is it will slow down the rendering of the website. It can fix JavaScript errors, but it's much better to exclude the one JavaScript file that is dependent on an inline JS than it is to move all the JS into the header. Because ultimately what will happen is the JS in the header is going to stop the page from rendering in a timely fashion for no real benefit. So. Only exclude the one file that's causing the issues. Don't ever use the forced JavaScript in the head. And then you can exclude scripts by including just the name of the script. As they mentioned, you can call it whatever or another.js. You can include the directory like they do for jQuery, or you can include it like they do for the entire directory of WP includes, among other things. So you can just go ahead and you have to make sure they're comma separated and include a space. Now, this option is very useful and you're going to have to use this to diagnose common issues. So long as jQuery.js is excluded, you'll most likely not run into many issues. You can also enable try-catch wrapping, which can help if scripts are breaking and, uh, and spitting out JS errors, but I've never found a situation where this resolved the issue for me. The next section is the optimized CSS code. Again, with this option checked, CSS files are minified, but they're not combined until the aggregate option is also enabled. I recommend that the option is aggregated. You can also aggregate inline CSS. Now this is kind of similar to the aggregate inline JS. It will attempt to find inline CSS blocks and move them into the main file. So for instance, on this website, there is this 2020 style inline CSS. To demonstrate, we're just going to empty the cache and save it. And now that CSS block was moved into this own file. As you can see, it's included here, as well as the emoji JS that's included by default in WordPress. An emoji inline CSS, that is. It also separates it based on the media type, so the print CSS is not merged into the main CSS to avoid issues. So this option on most installs is probably going to be slightly problematic if you're using dynamic inline CSS. So if you're using something like Visual Composer or Elementor, where CSS is dynamically inserted into the HTML, this also happens with Divi, 
what will happen is the cache size can get quite large because every page that has dynamic inline CSS will need to have its own cache file generated. So just like the aggregate JS, if you notice your cache size is getting too large, you might want to disable this option. On simpler websites, say sites built on Genesis or Gutenberg or just standard WordPress with widgets and a home page as just your blog page, you shouldn't run into too many issues. You then have the option to generate data URIs for background images. What this does is it will inline the background image in your, that are in your CSS files if they're small. And there is some calculations that they have done to determine what is going to be an acceptable size to be merged, to be base64 encoded. But that will only do it for smaller images. So if you have really large images, auto-optimize will ignore them to prevent issues rendering the images on the front end of the website. One thing to keep in, note, um, in mind about this is if you have an issue in GT Matrix, notice notably with CSS sprites, Enabling this option might make that make that issue go away, but when you encode background images into the CSS file, it increases the page size because the base64 encoded version of your background image will always be larger than whatever it was as an image, whether it's a PNG or a JPEG, it will always be slightly larger. So you'll have to do testing to determine if this actually improves your load time or not. Now, you can inline and defer CSS, and without the auto-optimized critical CSS power-up, this option isn't that great. What this will do is it will allow you to input one block of CSS, and it will load that in the header, and it will then, I'm going to demonstrate, I'm going to copy only this emoji CSS right here, this first line, and I'm going to call this, and I'm going to use this as my critical CSS. Now, if you go through the steps and you actually properly generate it by going to criticalcss.com or another similar site, this will prevent the flash of unstyled content, but what will happen is, I'm gonna show you the markup. With the option enabled, as you can see, it says, this is the auto-optimized critical CSS. It's inlined in the header. And the CSS files are now being preloaded on the onload event time is when they're going to be loaded. And you can tell because it's loading the files in a very different fashion. When I reload this website, you're going to see everything progressively load in. So the text finally loads in and gets itself colored correctly. It's scaled down and everything looks correct. And on the reloads, you don't notice it as much because the CSS file has now been cached. But that first load, you can see those, the Dynamic inline CSS is not the correct for the header. In other words, the only way to properly do this is if you have the proper critical CSS generated for your website, it's inlined in the header, and then it can will load in correctly. Some plugins will try to do this automatically. There are other cache plugins that offer similar features. This one without the critical CSS power up will not automatically generate it for you. So if you're looking to get higher page speed inside scores or improve your render time, I'm going to suggest you try the critical CSS power. It is paid and there's an FAQ for more information, but it will allow the site to render correctly without unstyled content, which will, which will be a much better user experience as opposed to just inline and deferring all of it. You can also inline all CSS, which I don't recommend ever doing it. It can improve performance scores on certain tests. Notably, notably, Lighthouse will no longer show remove unused CSS. However, this option is terrible. In fact, it should probably not be used and it should never be used and it shouldn't even be included by default. The only other thing that I would do is if you're loading dash icons on the home page, on the front page or on any part of your website when users are logged out, so if you're accessing this when not logged in and you still see dash icons being loaded, I recommend that you un-include this option here. That way dash icons is merged into the main file as opposed to being its own separate file. That way you just get smaller file sizes and as you can see it's included here. And you'll benefit from the better compression ratios.
under HTML options, you can optimize the HTML code. All this will do is it will take out white space and it will remove some comments. So as you can see, there are 376 lines of code and then it compresses it down to five, uh, 10 lines of code. Now, some things will not be compressed. Inline JavaScript, for instance, is not compressed and the white space in theory could be removed here, but auto-optimize does not currently support that. You can also include the CDN base URL. So what this will do is if you have a pull CDN setup, maybe through CloudFront or a similar service, you can include whatever the URL is that they gave you and it will just rewrite them for you. If you're using Cloudflare, you don't need this. Under miscellaneous options, you can choose to save the aggregated CSS as static files. What this will do is it will make the aggregated CSS and the JS files as that. It will make them .css and .js. If you uncheck the option, it will serve them as a PHP file. The only time you would need to do that is if your server is spitting out an error. There's no reason to load these as PHP files as they are static files. You want the browser to cache them and you want the server to properly handle them. So I don't ever recommend unchecking this option. You can also choose to minify excluded CSS and JS files. So if you exclude a file from the CSS or the JS options here, if you uncheck this, it will no longer minify the file, minify the file even though it's not being aggregated. Personally, I suggest just leaving this option unchecked, leaving this option checked. And then finally, you can optimize it for logged in editors and administrators. If you're working on the front end of the website, maybe you're using a page builder, I recommend that you just don't check this option. This option is unchecked. If you're working with Elementor, Divi, or alike, this option should just not be run for administrators because there are times when running these types of plugins will cause functionality to stop working. But for those who are not working on the front end of the website, which are gonna be your contributors, your subscribers, the average user, it doesn't matter if they're being served the optimized version or not because it's going to work for them. So these are my recommended settings. You optimize JS, you aggregate the JS, you check the first four options for CSS, you optimize your HTML. If you have a CDN URL, you provide it, and then you uncheck it for the optimization for administrators. Now under the images tab, what this will do is it will make use of short pixels CDN to rewrite, it'll rewrite the URLs of your images and proxy them through the short pixels CDN. This will then compress them, serve them as WebP, and do a bunch of other fancy magic to effectively automatically handle your image optimization. Now, you can pay for the short pixel add-on still from short pixel, and it will compress the images on your website. So this option will not compress or save you server resources at all. That being said though, it will serve them to the users in a faster fashion. You will want to check this option though. Sometimes when it is enabled, your image delivery speed might vary and might even be slower than it was before. So I highly recommend you test it. And then you have the option to lazy load images. Lazy loading images is quite simple. What it does is it will find if the image is up in the viewport, it will attempt to lazy load. I don't think I have an actual image on this website. It looks like they didn't include it for, let's see if I go back real quick. I'll check this option again. Okay, so what this will do is it will lazy load the images on your website and you can tell if you scroll down to the image, you'll see that it's been rewrite, rewritten to include a no script tag and the source attribute is a SVG file, and then it's data source, the URL of the original image. So the image won't be loaded until you scroll down to it, improving the load time and reducing the amount of bytes transferred on the initial load. I recommend you have this option enabled. Finally, the extra tab, and this is where you're gonna run into most of your issues when trying to figure out what to do. Most of the time, the only options that you'll need to use are the first three. If you're not using emojis, go ahead and remove the WordPress core emoji.js and remove query strings. 
Now for the Google Fonts section, if you're loading Google Fonts, don't use the last option. WebFontJS is quite a bulky script to load and it can impact mobile devices in a negative fashion. The recommended option from my experience is either combine and link in the head, which will load the fonts quickly, they will be render blocking them, or combining and preloading the fonts so there will be a flash of unstyled text, but it won't be invisible text, and the rest of the page can be rendered. So they will not be render blocking, but the text will be unstyled. Or they're included in the head, but they're render blocking. This site doesn't make use of Google Fonts, to my knowledge. But in theory, if it did, this will add the proper attributes and it will also add fonts.gstatic.com as a pre-connect header to improve the load speed of your Google Fonts. Underneath the advanced options, you also are able to preload specific pages. You'll be able to async JS files. So if there's a JavaScript file that's third party or local that you want included, you can add it. You shouldn't need to do this option if you're aggregating the JS files. And if you're excluding jQuery, don't include the asynchronous tag to it because that'll still cause issues. Preloading specific requests, what this will do is it will allow you to preload specific URLs, either a resource or in theory, you could preload an entire page. Let me demonstrate. This should work the last I remember. So what this is doing is it's preloading the actual page, the actual home page. So you're going to see in a minute. It doesn't look like it's making it. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do the hello world as the preload to demonstrate. It may not be doing the magic with on this particular plugin. Some plugins will use preload in, in respectively, but let's just see. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's handling it. There is a way to preload pages. It's pre through the pre-render tag. This looks like it just does the re, the rel pre yeah link rel preload. What you would use this for is um, if you have a specific CSS file or say Lighthouse comes up with an error and it suggests you to preload a resource, you can go ahead and do so here. You should not preload too many assets. Preloading too many assets can cause issues with the rendering speed of your website and it can also eat up the main thread time on mobile devices. So you really shouldn't need to do this for most websites unless you have a very specific asset that is rendering and loading much slower than it should be. And then you can pre-connect to third-party assets, which is just going to be like a uh, DNS lookup, and it will also start opening up the pipe. As it mentioned with the uh, G-Static, you don't need to do this too often unless you have a lot of third-party assets. And if you're in a situation where you have a substantial amount of third-party assets, you're going to be better off removing them and trying to find a local solution that's going to be much faster. And then there's the Optimize More tab. This tab is solely dedicated to their extra add-ons, their pro support, and a bunch of uh, referrals to other plugins and services that they recommend. And then there's the critical CSS, which is their power up that they recommend you install. And it will use the API key to automatically generate your critical CSS. Other than that, that is everything that you need to know about auto optimize. If you have a specific question regarding the plugin, feel free to ask me in the comments below and I'll try to help you out. If you're running into specific errors or issues, you can check them on the wordpress.org repository and ask for support. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.